So the, according to the Quran, the first text inside of the Quran, also known as Al-Fatiha, is a, a way in, to open up a portal that when said properly, which is not according into the Quran in current circulation, it can't be said because there's words that have been added. But, but when said properly, the tongue touches the roof of the mouth 19 times and it opens up this, the gate. Okay? So they said that about the first text of the Quran. So that must mean that that's also true about the first text of the Bible. Except the Bible that we read is in English. So as you see in, in the work that I, I end up uh, passing to uh, our brother Sven, it breaks down that first sentence again. And maybe in the other book, you should revisit that first sentence. Because he explains that in this first sentence, it contains the whole of this Torah. But if you compare notes with the Quran, it means that this first sentence opens up a portal. And the, he shows in, in his work that this first sentence, it, it literally comes in like, a, like, a, like it builds on itself. Like it starts off at a singular point and then it spreads out. And it literally talks about inhabiting a house. I'm going to get it for you and directly to read it to you. But it talks about how where we come from and then into this space, the first thing we do is we ha inhabit a house. And when we inhabit a house, it separates us from everything else. And this is the beginning. Okay, that's what when you interpret it into Hebrew, this is what it pretty much says. Because it's trying to let you understand that the moment that you come into this body, because it's this is the house, these are replicas. There's going to keep redundifying from the world to the apartment you're in, to the building you're in, to the block you're on. It's just going to keep redundifying because they're trying to show you that just this beginning, it echoes and it ricochets forever. There's never anything else but what happened in the beginning. To get into this side, you had to have a house. And that house is this body. And when you inhabit yourself into this house, this house called the body, you separate yourself from all there really is. And this is the world of separation. And then it goes on and it starts to elaborate about angels and energies of separation and how in which they cut. That's why angels, they carry swords in their hands because it's now a craft about how you cut the reality into the things that you want. Like they cut the land into the parcels that they want. They cut the words into the parcels that they, they, they want to speak. You see what I mean? So this is the art of what happens here. And there is nothing else. So even if we get to a super technological age where everything about that kind of stuff has been kind of shrouded under another guise, under that is that. So that's where we have to be. That's our middle ground in this with dealing with the things that are happening around us is stay focused on your creation. Stay focused on the things that are going to make you prominent because you know how people are starting to look around and like, where's the good help? Where's the ones that are supposed to be the good ones, the ones that are supposed to save us? Where's the, where are they going to come from? And I tell you, they're here. But you cannot reach them in the frequency of this madness. It's gonna to touch the roof of your mouth 19 times. And then you're gonna open up a portal within yourself that you always have access to. You're gonna study these mysteries, what's important. Just study the beginning. The end is not important. People are living the end right now. Let them live the end. The end was not important. The beginning, the original, we are originals.